OK, great. So um, I'll set this up just a little bit. So uh, Linda uh, has been coming to the Hack Night for like over a year now. Uh, and so she's one of our own. She's been doing a lot of work uh, uh, researching honorifics, uh, which is something that is kind of peculiar, a, a peculiar thing that our uh, city council does is they decide to honor certain people um, for various reasons by like giving them honorary street names or days named after them. Uh, and so this is kind of like a wonky uh, kind of topic to go into, but it's super fascinating, I think. So Linda has done a lot of research in this and sort of summarized all of that in a book, which I believe is also on Amazon. Uh, and she's going to share some of that with us tonight. So. Without further ado, Linda and Honorary Chicago. Anyway, this is um, Honorary Chicago. If you've spent any time in the Chicago area, You've probably seen these signs, the brown signs, the honorary with the, the six-pointed stars on each side. And uh, that's what the city of Chicago uses in a, as an honorary street in place of, it actually started out, instead of actually renaming streets, which is a huge hassle, <laughs> and you have to change addresses, you have to change maps and everything, uh, very expensive, started uh, offering honorary street names, which you know, you're not going to find that on the map. And uh, and uh, so there are stories behind all the names here. And I one day, I was just uh, walking around and looked up and saw this sign that said, Wugum, Wugum Alley. And I'm like, what is this? What is a Wugum? And why is there an alley named after it? <laughs> so uh, I started looking into these and you know, started uh, doing some research and bring together a map and uh, other things, just kind of for my own amusement. And it, it has been very amusing. And um, since I've been coming here, it's, uh, I decided to make it kind of my personal project to help uh, learn more about, uh, about tech and, and, and uh, what's new and what we can do, because I, I don't have a tech background. So this will not be a high technology presentation, but let's see. So, honorary Chicago. So these these are examples. Now, do you, any of you know who any of these are? Oh, we do have someone. Okay. Okay. Uh, Albert, yeah, that's an architect early on in uh, the history. Uh, Swami Vivekananda. He was uh, <laughs> uh, very interesting. That's actually right. Uh, and here's the location of them also tells a story. Swami Vivekananda, and his sign is uh, right outside the Art Institute, because he was uh, one of the speakers at the uh, World Fair. In because the same time as the World Fair was going on, it was also the national. Uh, well, it was. Uh, uh, a first group of kind of like world religions. And so he came from India, and he was uh, kind of the delegate from India and kind of helped describe Hinduism and the Indian culture to, uh, to the United States and helped, um, yeah, kind of East versus West and um, helped actually was some of the start of uh, different Vedic and yoga practices started in the United States. So great history behind a lot of these. Um, so yeah, who are these people? Why do they have signs? And why is the sign located where it is? Now each part of that tells a story. So I started collecting these stories. And, but, and um, I'm, I don't have a story. You know, I'm not a historian. I'm not a techie. I've been living in Chicago for uh, more than 10 years now. My background is really in business. I do research. Uh, analysis, strategy, marketing operations. And I've always worked in technology, um, kind of how to apply that technology to and look for markets for technology. But um, so I, I love data. I love, uh, you know, I love my spreadsheets. I love uh, uh, what you can do with it. And so um, this is kind of how I'm 
and then combining the two of them. And uh, I saw value in these brown street signs because, as far as I can tell, no one has collected like a full set of them. I mean, the information is out there. This is actually the hardest part of this is it's creating my own data set. Uh, the city has pieces of it available, but the archives I'm still trying to reach. So I hit the streets. And some signs are easy to find. You'll see Magnificent Mile all over North Michigan Avenue. <coughs> but uh, then Princess Diana Way. I'm uh, not going to see that. The sign was there in 1996, but uh, isn't any longer. And so I, when I come across the information, it's kind of a lot of across a lot of signs that were no longer there. You now that can be for various reasons. Um, you know, this one in particular, I think, since it's on this corner, there's been a lot of development around, this is where Northwestern uh, Hospital is, and they've built a lot of new buildings, and so a lot of the street signs have been coming down, and they probably never got put back up again. So that, that's the point here. Other signs do get, you know, get um, taken home as collectibles and, and, uh, <laughs> and things like that. So, um, so streets that signs that do exist currently and have exist in the part in the past, even more reason to kind of collect the history since you won't find it out there. So I started doing it uh, the hard way. Because <laughs> uh, that's where I started. So there are various PDFs with incomplete, and these are awful. <laughs> there are like you know, PDFs and spreadsheets. Names are misspelled, mm -hmm. wrong, you know, wrong directions. Uh, I, no one seems to have a complete list. As far as I can tell, I have the most complete list. Uh, conflicting information. And then when I started mapping and doing this, I'm going on uh, Google Maps. And based on my knowledge of Chicago, uh, putting in point, point, point where these signs are. Now, I did about 200 of those, and then I'm like, there must be better ones. <laughs> where, where did the PDFs come from? Uh, some of our, uh, the primary one that I used was actually on the internet. I actually did a request to the Department of Transportation, and like two hours ago, I got another one. But I, it's not complete. Um, like, they have the information, but they sent me kind of what they had compiled, and um, I think my list is actually a little longer than theirs. So I, wanted, I was trying to validate them. But that's going to be, there's a reason why no one's done this before. <laughs> and uh, this is, there are a lot of things, a lot of problems to run into. Like, um, so I came here and I was talking um, to Derek. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things was uh, on the listings, even in uh, the legislation itself, there are different descriptions of where the signs are. It could be. You know, corner of two different streets or the corner block of, mm -hmm. of this. Do you see anything else kind of strange mm -hmm. with uh, these? West California. West California, that's right. Mm -hmm. California doesn't run east west, it runs north south. <laughs> so that's just one of, <laughs> just one of the things to run. So there's a big data entry, but uh, luckily I came here and uh, learned how to turn PDFs into things resembling spreadsheets, and so I don't have to do it all by hand. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's it. So, okay, yeah. so enter uh, OpenGov, Derek, and Miguel, who was also a member here until we moved. And uh, I have to give a lot of credit to um, yeah, Councilmatic is making my life going forward uh, a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, Derek and his group has, have put together this website that takes all the, the city council meetings and all the legislation and, and lists it in very nice, readable ways, and you don't have to wait forever for things to download or search. So that's kind of my source going forward. Uh, going back in time is, mm -hmm. is still a bit of a struggle. Uh, I've learned how to do uh, fusion tables and turn my uh, favorite spreadsheets into things that you can actually map. And I did that with this thingy Derek made that turns your tables into searchable maps. And you'll see that in a second. So after um, Derek and the gut. <coughs> oh, I have the four picture. 
OK, yeah, this, this is the before picture. This is me folding my hand. And after, and then, yeah, it makes a big difference. <laughs> so um, let's see. We'll, we'll get back. We'll do the search and we'll map itself uh, a little bit later. We can kind of dive into that. I have a, a live <coughs> of it, hopefully. So, uh, so I, the map, but you can tell uh, <coughs> some things over here. It's still a data problem. Uh, there isn't a Chicago sign in Oak Park, right? and so it's still, for the most part, Google was reading there correctly, but you still have to go through and, and filter out uh, the ones that are just completely uh, in the wrong location. Like, there aren't any Chicago honorary signs outside the city of Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so, so some data cleanup to do there uh, so far, too. Uh, and then you got a map, got a bunch of information, you, you know, streets to run around, and you definitely need an app. So this is uh, why we start on the app. It's the old-fashioned way. It's a book. <laughs> 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 you got Chicago's Commemorative of Honors. It has about a um, hundred of the street signs in it. Uh, well, not just street signs, but the other honorifics that uh, Jared was talking about. I also have a calendar for days in someone's honor, and also uh, different uh, uh, congratulations and tributes uh, that the city gives out to for all kinds of different reasons. And some of them are really funny, but I found a lot of them just be really kind of great stories and heartwarming. I mean, some of the tributes are for someone who has died recently, and they kind of uh, you know tribute them in, in that way. Uh, there are other congratulations, like congratulations to Joe Smith on retiring after uh, his career in the police department, or um, Mary Jones for um, you know, 35 years as a Chicago public school teacher, and things like that. Or um, I think there was uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wait on, I think. After 50 years of marriage, so, <laughs> <laughs> you get all these kind of like little slice of life stories that are I just found totally charming, and um, and so I'm like, oh, this is fun. I'm gonna show this, and so, um, but also getting into I started. Uh, I've always kind of loved mm -hmm. Chicago and kind of playing tour guide in Chicago, particularly the architecture. And um, so this is kind of adding to that. And it made other things make more sense. I started seeing like connections between um, these people. Or it kind of, so there are a lot of things to do with this data um, once it's a little more cleaned up, but uh, you know, across time and uh, by different neighborhoods. And so, you know, this is a map of, of, the, of the different Chicago neighborhoods. You can imagine that as an overlay or um, so um, a lot of these things, when signs are put there, they're uh, by board. But one of the things I ran into is the boards have changed over <laughs> decades. And so when it, if I have a record that says it was in like, the, you know, the eighth ward, that it may not be the <coughs> board anymore. And you know, those have all changed. So you start seeing these, these trends in, by geography. And downtown, most people, the most signs. And when I was writing the book, I'm like, I don't want people to think you have to be like a real estate developer <laughs> or have a lot of money to get a sign. Um, uh, there are a lot in downtown. And when you get into the neighborhoods, it is more community members. Probably the largest category is clergy, like reverends and pastors. And, and, uh, you know, and there are signs are usually outside their um, you know, place of worship. But also people who have contributed to the community in you know, social services, different groups. And uh, the activists for, I mean, starting with um, uh, one of the earliest, most famous, I guess, in this area was uh, uh, Jane Addams, or Jane Addams Hall House. And, um, and then they're also uh, in the and you can also see, I also found out that these people were born in Chicago. Jesse Owens, Bob Bossy, Pat Sajak. <laughs> so there are, there are signs in their honor also. 
So, you know, what's the next? We have more. I want, you know, try to do more of everything. I mean, there are more kind of books in development. It's still working on, you know, getting the data so it can be uh, validated and analyzed in a more interesting way. Uh, upgrade the app from paper-based to actually uh, electronic um, <laughs> on the phone. And um, yeah, so you know, just collecting stories has been a lot of fun. So I kind of want to gauge a level of interest in doing There's so many different ways that this could go. But um, I, you know, I'm interested in seeing what other people are interested in, in pursuing and uh, which of these things to be next. And uh, let's see. And then I do have like. Yeah, this is so uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Not much on the website right now. The book is on Amazon. I have started giving um, actually tours, and so uh, or I've attempted to so far. So I actually was in the uh, business office. I took advantage of the service of the city and actually got a, um, a peddler's license. So I can actually. <laughs> As I do this and you know sell my book uh, while I'm on the tour, uh, so and then I you saw the the flag, the heart flag. Um, I I walk around the city with <laughs> the flag, because um, that's that's my that's my tour flag, identifying it. Because I go back to the beginning. Okay. This makes a much better flag than this. <laughs> what you, that looks like a candy bar. It's already a Chicago chocolate tour, so and that, that's a lot more fun. So, uh, but we probably want to actually look at. We probably want to see the map itself. Right. Well, there it is. And so this is. Um, you know, with searchable, so we can put in an address. Uh, we can do here. And search. And it takes you there. So it is where we are, and the streets around it, or streets around it, the signs around it. That's that little cluster in the loop. <laughs> in the loop. There's like five signs. Right? Yeah, uh, well, that is, um, let's see, this corner of you know, Randolph. That's in Hogs. Yeah, well, let's, let's see, because if you click on these, you know, just see Woods. <laughs> um, that was um, a woman who helped uh, bring uh, arts programs back into the public schools. Well, it created an you know, like after school work program, um, arts program. Uh, Rotary Club. Uh, what else we have here? Chris Manilo. Uh, this one. Philip Corboy. Uh, that was um, actually the law school. He's a lawyer. The law school at Loyola is actually named after him now. He was a uh, former um, former head of um, the Chicago. Well former president of the Chicago Bar Association, and um, yeah, we did a lot in that field. But. So there are a lot, you know, a lot of things, you know, the loop, there are quite a few, Michigan Avenue, there are quite a few, um, let me see if there's much more interesting out here. But then you got uh, Gene Michelotti Corner, does that sound familiar at all? If you go there, it's a restaurant, uh, Gene and Jordanes. So that's that's cheap. <laughs> and so so that's a lot of things too. Kind of local. Uh, so you have famous people. You have Frank Sinatra has a sign, and then you have you know, different restaurants and uh, people who were honored for various reasons. And so, you know, how they lived, sometimes how they died. Uh, there's definitely kind of memorial uh, honorary signs up there. So you know that's kind of it for. The presentation. What else uh, would you like to? I'll take questions. If, what would you like to see? I'm just curious. Do you, are you going to? Are you planning to provide any of the backstory on the stories that you know? Oh yeah. Website? Oh, on on the website. Yeah. Yeah. I'll um, 
it's a matter of how much. Because even when I was doing the book, I mean, that, I decided instead of making it a huge volume that will take you know, like 10 years to write, um, to do a tour book, to just get a little snapshot. So um, yeah, it's uh, I am going to start doing that. Now, there are lots of other things to do. I really like to do like a like a treasure hunt, a <laughs> current <laughs> book. And um, so I might actually have to take it out. Not make that too available, or take it down like the day before or something. Okay. Yes. Did you ever find out what a bogum was? Yes. Bogum. I didn't get to that. So W O O G M stands, and it's in the Lake Union neighborhood. It still doesn't tell you much about what it is, but it's uh, the Wellington Oakdale Old Glory Marching Society. <laughs> <laughs> it is the the ultimate in kind of like neighborhood. Inventions. It is. It has been going on now for over 50 years. I think this is the 51st or 52nd year. And on Memorial Day and I think Labor Day, they have like a home spun parade where people bring out their flags. People dress in like three uh, three corner hats. Um, one time, one of, one of the I think the grandson of the founder uh, played um, the uh, Star Spangled Banner. On his electric guitar, uh, Jimi Hendrix style, <laughs> and so, and then they, I guess their slogan is, "Nobody watches, everybody marches." So it's very a you know, participation kind of thing, and so that's uh, that's a lot of fun. So that's that's where the logo is. <laughs> so, okay. yes. I just wanted to say thank you because I live between Louis Farrakhan Way and Shaka Khan Boulevard, and I now know like, <laughs> what's behind all that. Um, and so I just also wanted to ask, like, so what is the process by which people's names are mm -hmm. selected for this? Yeah. Is it a yeah. democratic process, or well, how does work? I sort of it's it's really by neighborhood, and uh, for a name to get assigned, it has to be submitted to the city council. Uh, the two ways to submit to the city council is through aldermen, um, or the mayor himself can. Um, those are the only two ways I've seen. Perhaps there are others, mm -hmm. but um, and then it's um, yeah. There's not a lot of information actually in in the records. There's no information on like what this person actually did or who they were. It's just a name and a location, and that's it. So uh, the story isn't there. Um, so anyway, the city council votes on it. By the time it gets there, if it's been through <laughs> an alderman, and it's the alderman for the area in which the sign is going. So alderman, you know, yeah, yeah it, it's you know, alderman has to approve it first and then put it before the city council, um, and it's almost always approved at that point. You know, the case if it when it hasn't been approved. <laughs> well, there have been. Um, Probably the most uh, famous or infamous one would be, let's see, can we go over Okay, let me see. Um, let's see. Yeah, that doesn't help very much. Okay. No, not. Yeah. Well, you got some up there. Yeah. Oh. So, let's see. Now, Gerald Wexler. But um, probably the most controversial one was um, what's his name? Um, Hugh Hefner, uh, on our Playboy magazine. And uh, so he's from Chicago, uh, and his sign was. You can imagine that this sign is probably the most popular sign to be stolen. <laughs> so in the time I've been living here, I've Actually, I don't think I've ever seen it. So um, <laughs> I think they've stopped replacing it. <laughs> but, uh, but even having you know, the uh, all of the area you know, put it out there, and it was very contentious. And people were, said, no, we really don't want to promote that. And there was a lot of back and forth. And 
I think one of the older men like opened up, you know, showed like a open up like a uh, centerfold, <laughs> like like we don't want this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then uh, Christy Hefner, who's a daughter who in the town, the CEO of the company, um, made a personal appeal, I guess, on the floor of um, yeah, of the city council, and yeah, it was approved eventually. I, I'm not sure how long it took, but it was. Definitely. What year was that? What year? I don't remember what year it was. When did they first start? When did they? Okay. Well, the first. Yeah. Well, the process for this began in 1984 when they made an actual process that you had to go through the city council and then it would be approved and then the Department of the Transportation would put up the sign. Uh, there were signs that were put up before then, um, and so those were kind of before the process. I don't know when those started, but um, 1984. So this is the 30th anniversary of the signs. Mm. Yes. So did you? I might miss this. Did you go through and change all of those that data that would have been like the corner of the two streets or whatever the block number was for the signs? Or did you like what it's showing right now? Is that is an address? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a that's an address. Um. um let's see that one. Well, I think that was on. I, I had a couple different lists. And some, uh, I think one of them gave the, the kind of the cross streets. But uh, I did have one where part of the data set did have actual street addresses. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that's a really good one. And I'll, I'll, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes? Do you think you can make a map where it displays the honorary street name instead of the street name? Instead of? Yeah. yeah. When's your next tour? <laughs> Where's my next tour? Um, I guess I'm kind of with, and, uh, was doing that in uh, earlier in the uh, in the summer, but um, I've been doing it mostly on Saturdays at about two o'clock from uh, Historic Water Tower. But uh, actually, I always post it on Twitter. Uh, beforehand, so honorary Chicago, uh, which is the Twitter handle. Um, so, yeah, so there it is. So, um, oh, All right. Um, yes. If you'd like to request a tour, I can do personal tours or on request or you know, events, things like that. Um, and I'll, I'll have the flag with me. Actually, the flag is actually hanging up in the auditorium, and I just kind of surreptitiously put it up there and it showed up one day and no one took it down, so I'll <laughs> it's there until I need it. Okay, yes? Yeah, um, I, I remember when you were working on this, you were talking about how some of the data you had was imprecise because it would just have a hundred block or it would have an intersection of the center corner was on or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering um, what kind of precision you were able to get to, like for example, did you have um, an intersection where there were two different signs on two different corners, or what if you had to move your marker from, a, you know, the southwest corner to the southeast corner or something yeah, like that? Yeah, um, I don't have, on some of it I do have that level of like exactly which corner, the northeast corner or something. Um, and so where I have the data, I've, I've tried to do that, but um, I don't have the data on a lot of them, except for the ones that I've, I've seen and, and photographed myself. Um, so, um, yeah, and there are a lot that are on, you'll see multiple signs sometimes, especially downtown or some in, in the in, uh, surrounding areas that have you know, multiple honorary signs on the same signpost. Uh, it's usually like, um, 
the reverend, the last three reverends of a particular church, <laughs> that kind of thing. But, but not always. It could be two completely different people. Yes? Uh, how many honoraries did you find? Uh, my list is about 1,500. I think, I think, my guess, and I, and I think my guess is probably as good as anyone's, is that the actual number signs is actually probably closer to 2,000. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how many were you able to map? Well, were they all complete enough that you can put them somewhere? Uh, or were some um, too wacky that uh, can well, I mean, there are there are some that that's yeah I I couldn't quite figure out um, if I had you know a duplicate of it. Um, I think I just I, I took the one on what appeared to be my most recent list. Mm -hmm. So kind of kind of guessed on some of them. Yes. It's a very simple question, but just out of curiosity, how many lady hours did you do in this project? I didn't even count. <laughs> and it's a, I started looking at the signs and just kind of uh, <laughs> writing them down like years ago. Um, it took, uh, I started finalizing the book uh, about a year and a half ago. And it changed size. It went from a big book to you know, a small pocket guide uh, just to make it easy. But there, there are actually other ones in the works because uh, lots of different neighborhoods and lots of different kind of data sets. So. Uh, it could be one you know, across time or across certain professions, like where all the you know, police officers who have signs or where all the you know, politicians who have signs. Um, so yeah, there are lots of creative ways to kind of uh, mix and match. And then yeah, possibly do tours on yeah, all, all the fire and have signs or something like that. Awesome. Well, thank you. This is awesome.